Okay, so this video will address the Common Core, uh, sixth grade Common Core standard in the domain of the number system under the content cluster Compute Fluently with Multi Digit Numbers and Find Common Factors and Multiples. The key word here is being able to compute fluently. In sixth grade, we've got to be pretty flexible with these numbers, uh, with factor using factors and multiples and being able to move in and out of them and use them uh, to be able to compute math in various ways. Um, now, the, in this particular standard, it's a long one, and I see three main concepts here. In this video, I'm going to address the first concept, which is to find the greatest common factor of two whole numbers less than or equal to 100. The second concept I see um, addresses least common multiples, and the third concept will address distributed property. But in this video, I will address the greatest common factor. Um, a factor is a number that evenly divides up another number. So in other words, if we take the number 6, and we're just, since this standard is only dealing with whole numbers, we're just talking about whole numbers here. So the whole number 6, a factor would be a number that can evenly divide up 6. So 3, for example, I can divide up 6 into 3 even parts of 2. In fact, if I multiply 3 times 2, I get 6. So 3 and 2 are both factors of 6. Okay, so I see I, two um, basic methods you can use for um, locating or finding the greatest common factor. I'm going to first show you the factoring tree method with these two numbers, 36 and 48. And then I'll show you um, a list, what I would call a list method, uh, with the same two numbers. Uh, with the factoring tree method, um, a lot of people call a factoring tree um, one where you basically are drawing branches off of the numbers to figure out what are all the factors are. In this particular method, we're going to break down these two whole numbers into their prime factors. So with 36... The first thing I need to um, to pay attention to is that uh, the first two factors of 36 are 1 and 36, because 1 times 36 equals 36. Now, I can then start by breaking down 36 further, um, and um, I can see that 3 times 12 would equal 36. So basically, I'm creating two different branches off of 36 to show that 3 times 12 equals 36. So far, the factors that I'm, I'm, I have located are 1, 3, and 12. But 12 can be broken down even further. So let's break that down. So 12 can be broken down into 2 times 6. 2 and 6 are factors of 12, which then, therefore, are factors of 36. And then 6 can be broken down even further into 2 times 3. Okay, so we have now, we can't break down 1, 3, 2, 2, and 3 any further. These are the prime factors of 36. Now, what I've done is I basically have broken 36 down into its smaller, smallest parts. Um, that's not going to get me the greatest common factor. I now have the smallest factors that 36 has. But I'll show you in a minute how you can get to the greatest common factor after we work with the factors of 48. So now let's break down 48. First of all, always try and start with the obvious, which is 1 times 48 equals 48, because 1 is a factor of 48, and so is 48. We can't forget that, because that will be helpful in many circumstances. Now let's break down 48. Um, we can start by dividing it by 2 to find out what the factors are. 2 times 24 equals 48. Okay, now 24 can be broken down further. 2 is already a prime factor, so I'm not going to break down that down further. Let's break down 24. Let's break it down into 2 times 12. Hopefully I don't run out of space here. 12 can be broken down even further, just like I did over here. I have 12, so I'll go ahead and do 2 times 6. Those are 2 and 6 are factors of 12. And then 6 be broken down into 2 and 3. Oops, 2 and 3. Okay, so now what I have are all the prime factors in, of um, these two numbers, 36 and 48. But what I need to do to find the greatest common factors, I have to find the factors that are in common with both. And the, because of the way I created my factor tree, I'm basically looking at the left side 
to notice all the factors. And I'm actually going to circle the factors. So 1 is a factor of 36, so is 3, so is 2, so is 2, and so is 3. And these are the least uh, factors. Um, 6, 12, and 36 are also factors of 36, but for now I'm just going to notice the prime factors. And then for 48, the prime factors are 1, 2, 2, 2, and another 2, and then 3. So these are all of the numbers that fall at the ends of branches of the factoring tree. Okay, now for the greatest common factor, I need to look for what's in common between both numbers. Um, in terms of their factors. So, for instance, I'm going to put this in a different color. Let's do um, purple. So, uh, here I have a 3. I'll put a little check mark here. And here I have a 3. 3 is a factor. It's a common factor of both 36 and 48, but it's not the greatest common factor. I have a 2. It's another factor that's in common. And I have this 2. That's a factor that's in common. I have yet another 2 and a 2 on both sides. And do I have anything else? The only other two factors I have on this side are 1 and 3. And the other three factors I have for 48 is 1, 2, and 2. The only thing that's really in common is the 1 and the 1. Okay, so now what I can do is I can take all of the factors that are in common, all of the prime factors that are in common, and if I multiply them together, I will get the greatest common factor between both numbers. So let's take these um, factors 1 times 2 times, I'm looking at all the check mark numbers, times another 2 times 3. What I will get is 4 times 3, which is 12. And let's just double check on this side. If I take all these numbers that are checked and I multiply them, I'll end up with 1 times 2, I'm just writing multiplication in a different way here with a dot, 1 times 2 times another 2 times 3. And what I will get is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12. Yes. So now 12 is not only a common factor, but it's the greatest common factor because it takes all of the prime factors that are in common, multiplies them together, and we get 12. So that's the factoring tree method. The thing about this method is that you have to remember that when you're using the factoring tree, you're breaking each number down into its smallest parts and you're going to have to multiply some of those parts back up to a, to a factor that is bigger than the smallest or the least factors. Okay, so now another method you can use to find a greatest common factor between 36 and 48, the same two numbers as on the previous page, is what I might call a list method. And this is where I'm listing out my, the basically, um, the times tables or the multiplication facts that equal each number. So for instance, for 36, I know that 1 times 36 equals 36. Okay, we start with that because we have to always remember that 1 and 36 are factors of 36. And it is possible that sometimes that 36 might be a common, the greatest common factor between the two numbers you're looking at. In this case, it's not. Um, so I have 1 times 36. Another uh, fact that I know that equals 36 is 3 times 12. Another one is 6 times 6. Another one is 2 times 18. Another one is 4 times 9. Now, I kind of randomly thought up these. You could go in order. You can go starting with 1, 1 times 36, then you go to 2, 2 times 18, 3, 3 times 12, 4, 4 times 9, 5, not a factor of 36 because it doesn't even end in 5 or 0, 6, 6 times 6, 7, you can divide 36 by 7 in even parts. Uh, but these are all of my um, multiplication facts that equal 36. Now, if I go over to 48, I'm going to, in this case, in this time, I'm going to go in order. I'm going to say 1 times 48. I know equals 48. Um, 2. Yes, I can divide 48 by 2, so I'll try 2 times 24. Okay, how about 3? Three? 3 times 16 equals 48. How about 4? Four? 4 times 12 equals 48. 5. No, I can't divide 48 in 5 even parts, so 5 is not going to be a factor. 
6. Yes, 6 times 8 equals 48. 7? No. 8? Yes, but I already have 6 times 8. 8 times 6 equals 48. It's the same, it's the same fact, so I'm not going to write it down. Um, all right, so I have a list of um, basically their factors. Each of these numbers here, 1, 3, 6, 2, and 4, also 36, 12, 6, 18, and 9 are all factors of 36. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6, as well as 48, 24, 16, 12, and 8 are all factors of 48. Each of these numbers listed here can divide 48 up into even parts. Same with these numbers for 36. So what I need to do now is find the greatest common factor. So which factor is in common on both sides? I'll first start with that. Let's, let's, do, let's circle those in yellow. So do I have one on both sides? Yes. So I can circle those. Do I have 36 on both sides? No. Do I have 3 on both sides? I have a 3 here and a 3 here. Yeah. Do I have 12 on both sides? Yes, I do. Here's a 12 and here's a 12. Do I have 6 on both sides? Yes, I have a 6 and a 6. And then 6 again. Do I have 2 on both sides? Yes, I do. 2 and 2. Do I have 18 on both sides? No. Do I have 4 on both sides? Yes. There's a lot of common factors here. And do I have 9 on both sides? No. So now what I need to do, I've circled the common factors. Now I need to look for the greatest common factor. So the greatest number here is 12 and the greatest number here is 12. So it turns out that, yes, according to this method, 12 is the greatest common factor, again.